stay up with us. It's not that we can't be with her. Are you blaming us? Are you saying that it's our fault that this happened? No, I'm not blaming black American women. I just said that I'm blaming the system. They are victims of the system like the black male. Well, why do you say that we are castrating you? You say that.
hopefully that's a bit better because I've taken the external, the additional speakers out. All right. So Kendall made a comment that the gender war began years and years ago because, you know, um, we've got the concept of WIC, welfare. We've got the concept of, you know, incentivizing women to get the men out of the home. If the men didn't have work, the women could apply for welfare, but they had to be able to prove there was no man in the house, yada, yada, yada. So there's kind of like a back and forth between how much welfare played a role in the degradation of the American black family. Um, obviously, in the UK, we didn't have that situation per se. But years ago, they would tell girls like, you know, if you want to get a flat or somewhere to live, just have a baby. So, I mean, because we have a welfare state, but you don't need to have, I mean, there are certain forms of um, assisted living and accommodation where you're supposed to be a single person. If they find out you're flat sharing or that there's somebody else living there, that can jeopardize your your tenancy. And that's kind of like housing association, which sounds a little bit similar to section eight when it comes on to where they put you and the strict criteria, like you've got to be able to ask for permission to have somebody to stay over. And if they want to come and be there for more than one night, and you know, if you're a single woman, there shouldn't be no man in the house and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm just going to play this video from 1968. All right. And Chrysalin kept stopping her particular video to give commentary. And you know, my big issue here is the straw manning. It's the, it's the conjecture, it's the conflation. And it's just like, I don't understand why you can't just take what a man says at face value instead of trying to constantly reinterpret what he's saying. So I'm um, seeing as you guys are saying it's low, I'm going to just play it, but I'm gonna play the video. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh. I'm going to play the video multiple times. Let me know if you can actually hear me or if this is still going out. Maybe I should just check myself because it makes life much easier. It's okay. She cannot live with us. It's not that we can't live with her. Are you blaming us? Are you saying that it's our fault with this happened? Okay. No, I'm not blaming the black American women. I just said that I'm blaming the system. They are victims of the system like the black male. Well, why do you say that? Why do you say that? Because they are victims of the system. 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 Because they are victims of Black women the right to be creative, the right to function. We're not asking for you to take a back seat. We're said. saying that you have got to be astute enough and can view the situation well enough where you just automatically know what your role is and step back. And whenever you want to have that aggressive thing, this is the thing that the young black man today is not going to tolerate. My old man tolerated because he was his old man tolerated. It came up for years and years and years. But today, the young black man is not going to take it. White America has used black women to keep the black male in its place. And you're still hating it by saying, well, we're qualified. We want to work. We can help. Okay, how are you going to reprogram men so that they don't let us take over what's supposed to be their responsibility? And men that I have had dealings with, they are perfectly willing to sit back and let us do anything we want to. I, I don't think you have to reprogram men. I think you have to reprogram women. No, you have to reprogram the man so that he will forcefully no. take what belongs to him because you know women, as long as we can get, we're going to get. And it's, 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 it's part of our being. We're going to do anything to you that you let us, whether we want to or not. You don't want to live on a level of income that I can afford you in love. Be on the basis of that. You want to always be inspired to have all those things as a part of the great middle class white American society. And, and because I can deliver these things to you, you say that you are not a man. I don't measure a man by how much money he can bring home. I measure a man by how he treats me. Whether when I'm tired and I'm sick and I'm scared, he's there. All right. So you guys have heard that. Shout out to Dennis Sperling, doing great work over there. 
All right. Once abduction and castrated, the black male has continued doing this. She cannot live with us. It's not that we can't live with her. Are you blaming us? Are, Are you, you blaming us? us? No, I'm not blaming black American women. I just said that I'm blaming the system. They are victims of the system like the black male. Well, why do you say that we are castrating you? Did he say that we are castrating them, or did he say the system? Are you saying that there should be no black professional woman? Are you trying to deny black women the right to be creative, the right to function? We're not asking for you to take a back seat. We're saying that you have got to be astute enough and can view the situation well enough where you just automatically know what your role is and step back. And whenever you want to have that aggressive thing, this is the thing that the young black man today is not going to tolerate. My old man tolerated because he was his old man tolerated. It came up for years and years and years. But today, the young black man is not going to take it. He's going to be out there as a leader. White America has used black women to keep the black male in his place. And you're still hating it by saying, well, we're qualified. We want to work. We can help Okay, how are you going to reprogram men so that they don't let us take over what's supposed to be their responsibility? And men that I have had dealings with, they are perfectly willing to sit back and let us do anything we want to. I don't think you have to reprogram men. I think you have to reprogram women. No, you have to reprogram the men so that he will forcefully no. take what belongs to him because you know women, as long as we can get, we're going to get and it's I think we've watched that enough times. All right? It's <laughs> all right. Maybe I should just keep it up. So when Crystalline played this video, she kept cutting it, all right, to give her commentary. But the commentary is nothing but straw. And it was really irritating to listen to because just as the woman who was doing the, the interview kept asking this man questions, but then was putting words in his mouth, yes, nothing has changed in 50 years, but that's because women still approach trying to have a discussion with black men exactly the same way. The man at the beginning of the video, I didn't quite catch what he said, but he talks about castration. What is castration? It's making you ineffective to pass down your genetics to the next generation. It's basically neutering you because once you castrate an animal, which is to remove the testicles or to cripple the seed, that, that male animal is going to become more docile. That's what he said. He then went on to say, the black woman is used by white supremacy and we are both being used. She completely skips over that crucial statement where he says we are both victims of white supremacy and goes straight to the fact that her body language is stooped over. Right? She goes straight to the fact that the body language is stooped over, but all of them are sitting on the floor stooped over. She then tries to insinuate that this woman is somehow being victimized because she's looking down. Either she's looking at paper at the, on the floor where maybe there's notes, but she says, look at her body language here. You know, she's being humble and submissive and, and almost frightened of this scary black man. And she's trying to make herself smaller. It's like she's literally mirroring his exact same body language. And then she starts off by saying, are you trying to say black women shouldn't be creative, 
they shouldn't have this, they shouldn't have that. Can anyone tell me where the man said you should be pregnant and barefoot, you know, chained to the cooker, just churning out kids for us with, you know, an inability to read and write your own name? Because the way she paints this picture, that's almost what you'd think he said. And this man came on and then said, um, we never said you cannot work or be educated. All we're saying is you need to understand your priorities. And what I said in the comment section was, if you want to be a professional woman, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But don't have kids. Stay single, use birth control. Because at the end of the day, your main priority once kids come into the picture should be your household and your children. You can do the, the high-flying professional thing when you are a single woman. But once you have kids, they need you to be there. And that's what this man actually was saying. I am not saying that you shouldn't work or study or have aspirations or a career or dreams or anything like that. He literally did not say anything like that. The only thing he said was, you should know your role. And the role is you are the one who is supposed to be leading and teaching the children when you have children. Okay, because it's not possible for you to be able to care for children when you are exhausted from working or you're out of the house for long periods of time. And, you know, what happened is this. Kristen's video is 50 minutes long. You know, I skimmed obviously past the intro, which is 10 minutes. I literally watched most of the commentary with the clip. But then afterwards, she went on to something else. So by the time I started commenting, I didn't really know what came before or after. Okay. And I'm trying to go through it, but it's torturous listening because the, the amount of straw, I mean, you could feed a nation of horses with this straw. It's ridiculous, okay? So the man turns around and says, you should know your place. One of the women looks like she's about to have an accident because she can't believe he said, you know, know your place. She then starts straw manning the argument, talking about, look, he's basically saying you should be small and have no ambition. And I'm like, no, that's not what he said. He said, if you are a wife and a mother, that becomes your priority if you are a woman. You cannot prioritize your career and your personal goals at the expense of your family. I don't understand what's hard about that for you to understand. I, I don't know. I ain't got the patience for... for, for... Are you trying to deny us? Are, are you saying there should be no professional women? He didn't say anything about there should never be professional women or women shouldn't work. Now, obviously, this is an outtake of a longer interview. We don't know what happened before. We don't know what happened after. So I'm obviously talking about this from the the, the face value perspective. So the man got this other brother turns around and says, We're saying that you have got to be astute enough and can view the situation well enough where you just automatically know what your role is and step back. And whenever you want to have that, want to have you back. And when you step the role and know what your role is and step back. And whenever you want to have that, know what your role is. Well, you Look just at this woman's face. Know what your the way her eyes bulge, back. like what? And whenever you want to have that aggressive thing, this is the thing that the young black man today is not going to tolerate. Okay, so he says that even in, you know, the 1960s, Black women were acting in an aggressive manner. And this is what the previous generations of men tolerated. So you have a lot of women on social media who will say that the black community in the States is a failed patriarchy. Well, then you need to you know, point out when was it patriarchal? But a lot of men will tell you there's a reason why Big Mama is a thing. Because even generations ago, women ruled the house. They ruled the community. So what oppression were black women really facing when this man 50 years ago was able to say generations before our grandparents were tolerating abusive, aggressive black women? This is, I mean, this is ridiculous. So he goes on to say the black woman should be astute enough to know what is in the best interest of herself and her community. OK, that's all he said. If you want to be a high um, profile professional woman, no one is stopping you. Now more than ever, women, you know, work and, you know, he's going to talk about the whole job thing, which I'm going to touch on slightly. But at the end of the day, you should have enough common sense to know where your priorities lie. That's basically what he wants to say. It's not hard to understand 
but somehow this woman is trying to to um base her her rebuttal on a complete false premise or put words in his mouth that he never said my old man tolerated because he was his old man tolerated and it came up for years and years and years but today the young black man is not going to take it he's going to be out there as a leader white america has used black women to keep the black male in his place and you're still hating it by saying well we're qualified we want to work we can help Okay, how are you going to reprogram men? Okay, so he says white America has used the black woman to keep the black man in his place. Now, I got into a long discussion with people online about this. And the long and the short of the conversation that black women need to understand and realize is culture is passed down from generation to generation by the mother. So whatever you indoctrinate the woman to believe, that is what she is going to teach her own children. It's not hard, it's not complicated. Women by nature are receptacles. Women by nature are receivers. They're more easily influenced and they are more likely to, to be followers. So if you can get the mind of the woman, you can get that woman to train the children for white supremacy. Hence why you have women on social media, you know, twerking with their kids, pole dancing with their kids, you know, uh, rapping and that the song lyrics are explicit, you know, sexual in nature. And these women think it's perfectly okay. Their kids go out dressed a certain way because that's how they dress. Once you have the mind of the woman, you have the mind of the entire community because it doesn't matter what percentage of women are having children. If 70% of those children are raised out of wedlock and the woman is the first teacher, 100% of the next generation comes from whatever small percentage of women are having kids. How many women have kids, having kids in the black community is irrelevant because those kids are 100% of the next generation. 70% of them are born and raised in dysfunction. And so as a result, once you have the mind of the woman, you automatically have the mind of the child who is being programmed through the woman. Because the woman is saying, you need to be a go-getter, you know, you need to be strong, you need to be independent, you need to have your own money, don't listen to these men, yada, yada, yada. And that's what she's going to impart to her own daughters. Why do you think this thing has carried on for generations? Because these men's grandmothers were telling their, you know, their own daughters and their, their, their granddaughters, you need to have your own money, don't listen to these men, blah, 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 blah. I don't understand what's hard about that for Christine and, and women like her to understand. If you have the mind of the women, you have the mind of the children, because this is why they say no nation can rise higher than its women, because once you, once you corrupt the woman, she will automatically corrupt her own child, because what she believes is acceptable and right, that's what she's going to, to encourage her own child to do and condone. For example, recently I was I was talking to a friend, I went to visit a friend and the daughter was wearing something that I thought was inappropriate. And you know, you can't tell people how to raise their children. And I said something, but you can already see the faces getting a bit crinkly. And you know, I looked to the mother and she was like, it's fine, I like it. And it's like, at that point, you know, I just had to bite my tongue and literally walk away because you couldn't even say to the daughter, the way you are dressed is not becoming of a young lady because not only does the mother co-sign it, but she's also dressed in a similar manner. It's like for me to criticize the daughter is to criticize the mother. And this is one of the reasons why the sisterhood of failure always likes to cover one another's sin because to criticize one woman is to criticize all women because they co-sign the same things. So it just, it was ridiculous. And you know, you can't tell the young people anything because the older generation of women are supporting it. Now you have women like Lisa Ray and, and um, uh, Halle Berry and all these women thirst trapping on social media and their grandmothers. So you can't tell a young woman dressed like a lady when the women who used to be the matriarchs of the community or are of matriarchal age. And when I say matriarch, I don't mean control. I mean the women who used to actually sit up and look down over the younger women and help them to come up into mature womanhood. Well, you can't look to these women 
because these women are trying to get a second childhood on social media. Now, if you've got a husband and you want to twerk, you want to pole dance, I have a whole video that says, look, go and be the best hoe you can be for your husband. If you are a married woman, you have committed your body to that man and that man has committed his body to you. So enjoy yourselves, enjoy a healthy, happy sex life. That's what sex was created for, to be enjoyed and to be enjoyed between a husband and a wife. But it's not supposed to be, you know, for $20 a month on OnlyFans, okay? And so there's nothing wrong with enjoying your sexuality, but there's just parameters, okay? And so you can't look to these older women because they're trying to recapture their youth in in you know the new generation and compete with young girls so it it becomes really hard to fight against this tide and then you have women who will say chrysalin is not a feminist and women like her are not feminist but you can see that this woman is clearly operating under feminist indoctrination because what she is saying is my body my choice my goals my dreams whatever i want to do i need to prioritize my career and my independence over my role as a wife and a mother. How many years have black men been saying, we actually want you women to, to pick better and you, look, you don't have to be ultra skinny because black skinny is not white skinny. And a lot of the, the women who get up on social media, they try to make out like black men are, cause there are some black men who compare black women to white women. They try to almost insinuate that the whole um, situation is everything that a white woman has or does, that's what the black man is asking her to do. So are there black women who are, you know, as equally skinny as a lot of black, um, are there black women who are skinny as, as white women? Yeah, of course, because they work out or they maybe are just naturally um, slender. But the bottom line is this, a lot of black men are quite happy to date women that other races of men would call overweight. So this idea that Gabby Sidibe is the same as Kenya Moore or who, who can I think of? Um, because even now Jennifer Hudson has lost all of that weight. She's still not a beanpole, do you know what I mean? But even black women, because of our muscular frame, we're likely to be very curvy and have a, you know, a voluptuous look even when we're slender. And there is a marked difference between a lady who is Gabby Sidibe's size and appearance and the average black woman who is slender. But once again, the intellectual dishonesty and the conflation has to come through in order for these women to try and make some, some type of argument against the black man. Well, if the black man's standard for weight was so high, why is obesity so prevalent? And why are are women who are morbidly obese like Gabby Sidibe getting married to black men. So that argument doesn't even make any sense. But, you know, again, she's putting words in his mouth. She's basically trying to formulate an argument on something that the man never said. All he said is, and what I'm saying is this, if you want to be a career woman, that's fine. Go and pursue your career, your interests and your hobbies, but understand that once you have a family, that family has to come first. That doesn't mean to say you can't have a job or you can't have hobbies or you can't have interests or you shouldn't be professional. We don't live in that time anyway. But at the end of the day, you have to put those children first because they are dependent. That's why uh, they are called dependent. They are dependent upon you to teach them, to do homework with them, to make sure they get home on time or safely, to prepare nutritious meals, to pull them up, that is the role once the children come into the picture. And she completely glosses over what the man says to talk about whether or not she's allowed to have dreams or not. I mean, it was just a ridiculous statement. I don't know. Play it. Okay, and he says the young black man is going to take it. I think raining woman, you asked me, was it? I think no, not raining woman. Somebody else asked me what it's like here in the UK when it comes on to interracial dating. Now, because I wasn't really paying attention, I just assumed that you know most black people are with black people. But when I started going out and really looking, especially depending on where you are, 
I started to realize a lot of the young black boys are with white girls. It doesn't matter whether it's a relationship or if it's just casual. I notice more and more, maybe now because my focus is on it, that yeah, a lot of black men are starting to date out more. And the reality of the situation is this, it's nothing to do with men on social media and MGTOW and SYSBM and, and you know the black manosphere. TikTok and Instagram and women posting all kind of videos where they completely show their hand and their behind is why so many black boys are realizing that at the end of the day, you know, these women ain't sugar and spice and all things nice. You know, you know, I'm always lurking somewhere, you know. And um, one time I was on the bus, I told this story before. There's these two black boys sitting behind me and they're talking to each other. They must have been about maybe 16, 17 max. And um, the, um, hey, what's up, man? One showed the, his phone to the other and he said, look at this girl. And the guy said, yeah, and so what? You know, I think he said she's 15 and her body count is three. So the, the other one who was looking at the picture said, so? And here the first one showing the picture, that's good. And I thought at 15, body count of three is good. So what does that mean? That you mean to tell me the average 15 year old already has more than three bodies on them? I mean, uh, this is why sometimes the guys in the manosphere, they get on the older generation because they're like, you don't realize how rapidly this thing is escalating. Like if you talk to guys who are millennials, 20 and under, it's a different ball game out there. The way young people are becoming over-sexualized. I mean, when I was at school, doing your nails nicely was a big deal. Now I'm seeing 15-year-olds, full lace front, eyelashes, caked on makeup to go to school, nails that are, are dragon claws. We didn't have young girls like this who would go out so... Um, we know that there were always girls who liked to dress older than their age, but we're talking about on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is why the wall is not just physical looks and age. A lot of these young women, you know, and I'm not trying to get on them, a lot of them could not run a household if they had to. Yes, you look good and you can lead with your sexuality, but outside of the bedroom, you have no purpose. And that's not me trying to be nasty, but that's actually what has happened here. A lot of these women want to be independent, and a lot of them are just saying, look, we don't even want to be housewives. We've given up on marriage. We don't even care about that. We don't mind being mothers and we'll just we'll just keep going on the gram until we can't we, we ride this thing till the wheels fall off and it's scary to think that when you have these black women on social media complaining about black men hopping the fence they have to understand that it's not just about it's not just about um a gender or a color it's about socialization black females in the west are socialized to not be uh, able to function as wives and mothers. Whereas in other cultures where they have uh, a better understanding of traditional gender roles and patriarchy, because somebody said to me, well, what about the Hispanics? Well, first and foremost, the Hispanic men make less on average than black men. But because they have a patriarchal culture, even black, um, sorry, Hispanic men raised in single mother household are still treated with masculine uh, with, you know, with masculine respect, if that, that makes sense. Their masculinity is respected, not undermined. They still believe in traditional gender roles. They still let men lead. So even a boy raised by his mother not only will be encouraged to be a man by his mother and not undermined and undercut every five minutes, but also she will encourage him to get around other men who will help him come into his manhood. Mentality is the key factor. And in the black community where you have men being raised by women, yes, the, the, the body looks like a man, but the mentality, and we're talking about problem solving ability, we're talking about skills, we're talking about attitude, we're talking about all of the things that help you to be successful. Because where the mind goes, the body and the life follows. When you have a guy who is gynocentric in his thinking, that he's emotional, erratic, impulsive, He's, he's got a low um, resilience level because there's a reason why black women or women in general make less money. It's not because of a glass ceiling because you're being X'd out of the job market. You make less money because the jobs that make good money, you either can't do them or you don't want to do them. Women don't want to dig the road. 
They don't want to drive on average, you know, long, big trucks. They're not in STEM. They're not doing the jobs that make that high kind of money, where even if you did a nine to five, you'd be on a six figure salary. A lot of women are in service jobs. They're in um, hospitality and just av average retail and things like this. This is why when it comes on to poverty, half of them are women with or without children. Because why? Women are impulsive spenders. If you are on a low income, living above your means, you are going to be in poverty. And so it, it stands to reason that if you do not understand that, you're going to end up leading your own children astray with bad advice. It's just that simple. There is no glass ceiling. There is no uh, misogyny. There is no um, pay gap or whatever. It's simply women work differently and women work less. If you have children and you have to take time off work to give birth, take time off work to raise infants and, you know, kids get sick and you have to leave your job to go and tend to children, obviously your income is going to be lower. So being a single parent has negative implications because of the poverty aspect. This is why the man is saying, come together with a man and be there in the household for your children. Because once you have two incomes, and that child is getting the tangible and the intangible benefit of that mother, they are more likely to go on and be successful. That's why this man is saying that the black woman is used as an arm of white supremacy, because by taking the mother out of the home, the children are left completely uncovered. This is why you have the 80% abuse rate. This is why you have the latchkey kids. That's why you have the children in the streets. That's why you have the girls who are teenage mothers and, and single mothers, because they are left uncovered, because so many of them do not have consistent oversight in the home. I don't understand why a woman of 50 cannot understand this and why she can't just honestly address the fact that when women are taken out of the home, the children are left unprotected, they're left unguided. A lot of us will put our hands up and say we were latchkey kids. I know when my mother was working and studying, I literally did not see her for days at a time because when I would go to bed, she hasn't come back yet. And by the time I get up, she's already gone out. It's notes and, and food's prepared and food is covered. And I was completely left to, to raise myself. And this man is saying, this is not how you can progress a community where you have a, a generation of latchkey kids. And I want to address something that Cynthia G, G said. Recently, she did a video a few weeks back. Um, she was allegedly dating a mammy, a, a marriage-obsessed obsessed mammy, something like that. And she said, I don't know what the income of a single mother is. And I went and looked, and it was like, I can't even remember. I've got the article here. I'll see if I can find it. But the income of a, a single mother is you know, considerably less than even two average paid married people. But not only are the people who are married less likely to be in poverty, which obviously is beneficial for the child, the, the married couple has the ability to be there for the child when they need to be. But the mentality that the child gets from watching their parents actually makes them 30 times more like, sorry, 30% more likely to have positive um, socioeconomic progress. Whereas people who are raised by single mothers um, only are socially mobile, a, a small percentage, a person just simply raised by two parents in the household who are just good enough on not, not even a high income, but just a reasonable income, go on to be 30% more likely to be um, socially, economically, upwardly mobile just from having the benefit of seeing two parents, then working, maybe you have a bit more money, you're less likely to be in poverty, maybe they'll they'll sacrifice a lot of things in order to do, you know, a trust fund or some savings or to buy you that first car or to pay for a tutor or whatever it is. There's just the mere fact that you have the tangible and the intangible benefit of two parents in the home will enable the children to, to have a better outcome. And I'm going to touch on that in a minute because once again, Crystalline tries to make a point and then completely undermines her own point. And if you care, send Xanax. <laughs> Look at her face. She's like, what? what? And 
you still hating it by saying, well, we are qualified. We want to work. We can help. Okay. How are you? Okay. So what he's saying here is this, and what women need to, to understand and realize is when women started joining the workforce, it, they had to cut men's jobs into two or three in order to actually create work for, for women. Maybe women thought that when they joined the, the job market, that they would just suddenly miraculously create more positions and they would get the same money as the men. They said, no, there are some aspects of a man's job that he doesn't need to be particularly skilled for and we can make that into a job for a woman. And so whereas before a household could live on a man's income because it was that high, by cutting the job into thirds, the pay was obviously cut into thirds. So now with the cost of living versus how much the man is getting paid, it becomes too difficult to live on a man's income unless it's high. It's not so much women have to work, but by women joining the, the job market and flooding the job market with more employees than positions, what happened was the employer is now in the position of leverage. He can drop the price or the rate of pay because for every how many people who will say, I cannot take this job because it's not going to pay me enough, there'll always be somebody who will. This is why you have the foreign workers who come across the border, stow away on the plane, ride, you know, under the vehicle and, you know, do cockle picking or whatever to, for two pounds an hour. Because there's always somebody who is desperate enough to uh, to work for that low rate of pay and that drives the wages down. So it, it's not a case of this man doesn't want women to be professional, but you have to understand how feminism, and this is part of feminism, has negatively impacted the family. You want men to lead, you want them to provide and protect, well then you have to understand that because the, the job market has driven the price of, of the wages down, you're going to find it hard if you're low skilled to be able to get a man who can you can be hypergamous with seeing as that's that's the big thing okay then she completely ignores what he says which is again something that hasn't changed over the last 50 years going to reprogram men and then so she that immediately they don't let says us take over what's supposed to be their responsibility and men that i have had dealings with Okay, I mean, there was about three things that she said right there that was completely ridiculous. First and foremost, so the first thing she says is, how are you going to reprogram men? Well, it wasn't men that moved out of position. It was women who decided they want to be liberated from men. So what are you, even if you ask that question, what are men going to do? Because let's just be clear. One of the things that gets really irritating about a lot of women on social media is they like to conflate when they need to be very clear. Not Men are not a, a monolith. You know, not all black men are the same. You do actually have high performing black men. So why are you talking about them all as if the entirety of the black community is is not doing well. I mean, this doesn't relate today in particular because more and more black men are being successful. Maybe back then that was more common, okay? But she turns around and says, what can black men do in order to change what what is carried, what's happening? Instead of saying, what can we do? How can we work together? You know, what do women need to do? What do men do men need to do? It's just immediately she jumps to, well, the problem obviously has to be you guys. Then she says, so what do men have to do in order to not let us? But you cannot let an adult person do anything. You have free will to choose what you want to do. If you choose to submit, you submit. And if you choose not to submit, you're not submitting. So what do you, now this is why I get irritated. You know, something else she says is, you know, a woman will rest in her femininity when the man creates an environment. This is one of those, um, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if you would call it a straw man, but at the end of the day, you're basically making an adult woman's uh, femininity another human being's responsibility. It's not the, the man's job to tell you how to behave. It's your job to know what your role is and, and fulfill it. It's not about for him to control you because how exactly could he control you? And I asked the lady who I was having a discussion with, 
do you want him to to physically chastise you like they do in certain parts of the world oh it's funny because obviously she assumes i'm a man you know you know it's funny that you go to violence well well what other way are we going to tell you how to behave if the man is having a conversation with you and laying out exactly what his concerns and criticisms are and you are turning around talking about well you need to control us and you need to to manipulate us and and rein us in and and you know guide us like a deer or a donkey it's like what how please what you should tell us is exactly what this man needs to do for you to submit not for him to try and figure it out that doesn't make any sense and this is a very simple simple situation people around the world have got it figured out the woman knows her place she knows her role the man knows his place he knows his role and they get on with it they're not fighting nature the women are not trying to be masculine and it's, it doesn't even make sense when a woman says i bring to the table my career and my education you need to ask them how does that career and education benefit your romantic relationship and after they say, well, I can, I can pay for things. Then you ask them, so basically you want to take care of your man? Well, no, I want him to still pay for everything. So why do you lead with your, your career and your education? It doesn't make any sense. It's just, I want the career and the education. I don't believe that you'll be able to take care of me. I need to know I've got a backup plan and a way out should things go south. But because she can't say that, she tries to make out like somehow the man wants the money and he needs the money for the relationship when that's not what he said. But going back to this thing about control, if you are a grown woman, you cannot be controlled by another human being. Either you know what you're supposed to do or you don't. And as you can see, even in the 21st century, women are still saying this kind of crazy things. supposed to be their responsibility men that I have had dealings with, they are perfectly willing to sit back and let us do anything we want to. Okay, first and foremost, mostly you want to do anything you want to. That's why you picked that man. You picked a weak, passive man because you wanted somebody who could not, you know, couldn't bring down that hammer on you. You wanted a compromised man that you could control and walk away from. And that was why you picked him. Because she said, the men that I've had dealings with, as if you've had dealings with the entire black population. Now, I'm not going to talk about her character, the joking. But at the end of the day, this was a stupid point. And it goes back to women, even in the 21st century, where women are complaining about the very men they choose. Who asked you to pick these broke men? Who asked you to pick these the guys that you pick? But once again, the deflection has to be that the woman has to make herself into what a, a high value man would want. You know, I know this term is, is causing divide division, but at the end of the day, when we talk about average, what is an average man? The av one third of the world's population, I think makes $2 a day or $2 a week. So if you are in a wealthy country making 50, 60, 70,000 a year, you're already doing very well on a global scale. And high value to an extent, I know Kevin has his own standards and I agree that you have to have more than just money. But at the end of the day, high value is also relative depending on the way you are prepared to live and your cost of living. If you have a high income in an area where the cost of living is low, you will live like a king. And if you have a, a high income compared to the world, in a place where the cost of living is extremely high, despite the fact that you have a high income, you are going to be deemed almost broke because you are living paycheck to paycheck. So it, it, it stands to reason that when you talk about high value men, income, lifestyle, you've got to understand what you're willing to sacrifice. And that's what the man goes on to say. OK, you have to understand that if you want to build something, sometimes we're going to have to start off humble and small. And it, you can't just get out of the gate and be and be succeeding. You know, he's going to have to take time. And obviously, back then, it was even more challenging for him to be able to succeed and thrive because there was probably more institutional racism and it was more overt than even today. OK, it's, it's not like. 
at the end of the day no one asked you to pick a broke man but that's the man you chose and yes things haven't changed in 50 years women are still complaining about the men that they choose to date and the fact that they can't turn them into husbands you have to reprogram women. No, you have to reprogram the man so that he will forcefully no. take what belongs to him because you know women, as long as we can get, we're going to get, and it's, 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 it's part of our being. We're going to do anything to you that you let us. Whether we... So she basically just exposed her entire hand. I don't even know why Kristen didn't pick this clip. I swear to God, I don't know why she picked it. Because the woman just came out and told you, whatever you let us do, we will do it whatever you allow us to get away with that's what we're going to do so how can you then say we don't understand how black women can be used as the right hand of white supremacy when the woman is blatantly telling you in no uncertain terms out of her own mouth if this is what i want to do this is what i'm going to do and if you allow it we are going to do it now that's why i asked the lady <laughs> Complex and I are on the same wavelength because I put the word forcefully in there as well. Okay. At the end of the day, who are you trying to be forcefully on? Are you saying let's forcefully try to overthrow white supremacy? This is another straw man deflection because white supremacy is an entire collection of systems. It is something that is per that has permeated every area of human activity, whether it's the law, whether it's the education system, whether it's the media, wh whatever area of life we're talking about, employment and things like this, white supremacy has engineered it in a certain way. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot thrive in the West as a black person, but what I am saying is this, this idea of what black men who are not taught to read who are not taught to, to work, who are not given enough skills, often do not have fathers in the home, how are they even mentally or, or practically equipped to overthrow a system like white supremacy? But let's say they do go, they do try to do the militia thing. Do they have the firepower? Do they have the army and the artillery behind them to challenge white supremacy? Or it, will that give them the ruling powers even more um, you know, desire to bring the army to the streets and gun down people. So this idea of basically trying to send black men out onto this fool's errand, this kamikaze mission, it doesn't even make sense. Now, if you're talking about the man trying to forcefully control the woman and rein her in, well, number one, you're an adult. You shouldn't have to be reined in. I mean, you might have to be checked. We all have to be sometimes. But we're not talking about a parent-child relationship, but yet she's talking about forcefully. Now, if you do put your foot down, you're controlling and you're a misogynist. So what do you want? You cannot lead somebody who's not willing to follow. You cannot help somebody who doesn't want to be helped. And this woman, the way she's combative, it makes it very clear that she does not want to follow the leadership of any black man. And the goalpost just keeps moving. Now, Chris said at the beginning of the video, she tried to say, I don't know why people say I hate black men. My father was a sharecropper and he was he had an eighth grade education and he was one of the wisest men I ever knew and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, but then I need to form alliances um, with people who can be allies. And I'm thinking if your father was a sharecropper, wasn't he being um, oppressed by the same white people that actually, you know, you're now promoting on social media? So what allies are you really trying to form here? Allegiance with the same people that oppressed your great your grandfather and your father? I don't even understand how that makes sense either. But again, we know that the white male worship is strong. And let me be clear for those who haven't heard it before, I'm not against interracial dating. If you like to date out, that's your preference. As long as you are happy, that's fine. But at the same time, worshipping another race as if they are perfect with no flaws is ridiculous. And let's stop the whole, you know, black women are under Stockholm syndrome, trauma bonded to black men, because the vast majority of everybody on this planet dates within their own race. So she turns around and says, what do black men have to do? I notice she never says, OK, so what can we do? Because obviously the black woman is perfect. She never has anything wrong. So, yes, some things haven't changed in 50 years. They've only got worse. Want to, to always be inspired to have all those things as a part of 
part of the great middle class white American society, and, and because I can deliver these things to you, you say that you are not a man. I don't measure a man. Okay, so then he turns around and says, you want this big dream. And she tried to highlight the fact that she she wants modern conveniences, which, you know, it doesn't matter what time you live in, it's relative, it's going to be quite expensive. Now, if he's on a low income, it doesn't necessarily mean that she cannot work and they can't pull their resources together. But what it does mean is this, if you are on a low income, following the lead of that man, you will have to sacrifice. You know, I watch some of these shows where the people, you know, they go and build their dream house or they go and finally buy their forever home where they're eventually going to grow old and die in. And so many of these people are in their 40s and 50s. Some of them are retired. They literally have spent their entire married life dreaming of the day when they can finally get that house. For the, a lot of us, especially those of us who haven't had things left to us, you know, shout out to people who are trying to give us advice about finances. Getting a life insurance policy is a good thing because at the end of the day, once, you know, you die, you can pass that, that money down on to, to the next generation. It might not be a huge amount, but that could be a deposit for a house. It could be a deposit for an apartment. It could be anything that's going to help them progress into the next, the next stage of their life. Now, if you are, and this is why, you know, you, we take the mick, you guys might take the mick out of the Hispanics. Here we kind of laugh at the Eastern Europeans where it's like 10 live in one house on five beds and you like, you know, five work in the day and five work at night. So when the, the night shift ones come in to sleep, the ones that's been asleep get up to go to work. But it's, it's amazing how after a while they all move away. And before you know it, they've all got homes. They're all opening businesses because it just makes sense that when you have people living humbly in a smaller, you know, um, a more humble lifestyle, less of your expenses, your expenses are smaller. Let me say it like that. That means more of the money that you bring in can go into savings. It can go into investing. It can go into buying property. And over time, you can expand. You cannot just come right out of the gate and just be on your feet. Obviously, some can if you've got a, a pop in business and you're successful. But the vast majority of people are working for decades in order to get into that strong financial position. So this woman here talking about, I can't be with a man. I'm, I'm not saying date down. I'm not telling women to get broke men. This is why this conflation argument is really annoying. Because at the end of the day, yeah, there are a number of, of black men who are, are not necessarily achieving but there's men of all races who are not achieving. So let's not pretend like black men are the only men who don't um, are not overthrowing the whole universe and they're not all entrepreneurs. Even the average white man is not an entrepreneur. So let's just let's just cut it out, okay? So she's talking about, he says, you want a particular lifestyle, but you want it straight away and it takes work. Sometimes you're gonna have to buy that cheap washing machine. And then over time, you upgrade. You might have to get into a small apartment. You may have to get a property and live in one room and rent the other out to a lodger so you can pay that mortgage off a bit quicker. There's going to have to be a compromise, especially when you're starting out small. And this woman is like, no, I want it now and I want it yesterday. And it, it, just, it just can't work, especially black then where back then back then when you know black men were being probably squeezed out of the job market a lot a lot harder than they are today okay so it's what she's saying no one is saying that you shouldn't want nice things but you have to appreciate the process you have to start small because there's no way especially with his income and you can respect a man who makes less money than you because at the end of the day your money is supposed to be the family's money if you guys are married anyway and what i would say is this if that man has got all of the the benefits and the tangible the intangibles that you want and he takes care of all the stuff that we don't like to take care of because i don't know about anybody who looks forward to paying bills unless they've got red letters on the door and they've got that drawer with all the bills that they hide because they can't face them other than that, everybody's like, I don't even know why I go to work. As soon as the money's coming in my hand, I'm having to pay the tax man and all these other people. So if you've got a man who has less money than you, but he's paying the cost to be the boss, 
you know, if I can kick my foot up on the couch and he's making less money than me, who cares? That's what you want. That's being a leader. That's governing the household. At the end of the day, your money is supposed to be for the family anyway. And there are some people who would say, even if the man makes more or less money, if you work as the wife, the paycheck goes to him so he can govern the finances. But if he's paying the cost to be the boss, who cares whether he makes more or less money? Your money now becomes pocket money. Your money becomes investment money. Your money becomes deposit money for other properties and you can get into development. Hey, girl, long time no see. You know, your money, it goes into other things to progress the collective goal of that family. It's not your money and his money. You're supposed to be working towards a common goal. Going back to what Jeannie Mai said, she said at the end of the day, I don't want to be working and then my goal is kind of conflicting with our overall vision. So yes, men do have to have a vision if they want to, to, to have a woman who is submissive. But at the same time, if you're a woman and you're not willing to, to submit, there's, you, can't, you can't be made to submit. Either you voluntarily submit or you just don't get with that man. But stop trying to get with men who you know you can't follow their leadership, it doesn't make any sense. Or stop trying to make men into things they're not. She said, the men I get with will get with different men. And sometimes the reason we all know that these women don't get with different men is because they either can't get them or they can't keep them. And if you've got this attitude of me, mine, my money, I'm building this for me, yada, 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 a lot of men don't want that, that contentious attitude and atmosphere in their home. Shout out to Roger Report. He said, you know, women need to be, you know, the man needs to be compensated, you know, for the fact that his wife is working all the time. That's why the money has to come into the household in order for him to govern those finances because he's missing out on the benefit of having a wife. And that's what's happening here. This woman thinks that she can juggle work, education and a family. And what often is going to happen is she's not really doing any of them well. And again, he never said you cannot be successful or pursue your interest. This goes back to how you raise your daughters. If you raise your daughters and socialize them with a plan, they can actually do a degree that will enable them to work from home later on in life. But if you do certain degrees and, and get into certain fields where there's no possibility of you working from home or turning it into a home business, you are eventually going to be taken away from the people who need you. So th th this whole thing was just, this thing was just a mess. This thing was a mess. But she was right. Things haven't changed in 50 years. And that's because black women, and I'm not saying black men are perfect and they haven't, they haven't got things that they could work on. But definitely this is a huge part of the problem. You cannot make somebody submit. Either you're submissive and cooperative or you're not. Either you want to follow or you don't. And if you don't want to follow, that's fine. Just stay single and pursue your career and do you. And by how much money he can bring home. I measure a man by how he treats me. When now, this was a ridiculous statement, okay? I don't measure a man by how much money he makes, but how he treats me. Of course, obviously, back in the day, the narrative was the women were all being abused. So now they swung in the other direction, talking about how we want men to be kind and sensitive and gentle. But at the end of the day, if you are the main breadwinner or you are making more money than the man, you are leading with masculine energy. That's why you keep attracting men that let you do what they that they that you want to do. Because at the end of the day, masculine energy always attracts feminine energy regardless of the body exuding the energy if you are a female exuding masculine energy you are going to attract passive beta males men who want to be taken care of this is why i always say black women create the men they complain about because of what they tolerate and the energy they give out and the standards that they have and she's talking about well i want a man who's caring and kind and when i feel sick he's going to be there to to rub my back and give me chicken soup and it's like but then afterwards when you're exhausted because you have to work you're now complaining that this guy is sitting on the couch while you're going to two jobs it, you know and you know whether when i'm tired and i'm sick and i'm scared there doing what so at the <laughs> so at the end of the day she wants a man who's going to be there but what exactly there for what just to be there to make you soup and to rub your back when you're tired because you've been at work all day 
<laughs> um, yeah, the clip is actually at the top. We we played it a few times, and so um, the the link at the top is the the full clip without anybody talking over it. <laughs> okay, so Crystalline, to her credit, she did say that this is part of the problem, but then she then turned around and said, you know that um black women what did she say black women settling and black women black women dating men based on potential well this woman didn't mention anything about potential she literally said i don't care if the man makes more money what i care about is him being nice to me not even that he has a character or that he has ambition that literally he's just nice to me so it was exactly a lot of these women, they're looking for, for wives, but they don't want to admit that she they're looking for a wife. They're looking for somebody who will give them sex, maybe children, uh, pay all the bills and do all the heavy lifting, but they're the ones in charge. And because a lot of the women on social media don't want to admit that they want black men to build, but they want to lead and run it, that's why they always have to manipulate what the man says and twist it around into something that he didn't say. Now, she came up with she came up with something. She tried to then make a point, and I'm going to pretty much end with this one. Oh, she tried to make a point. She tried to then say, "Well, ladies and gentle ladies, ladies, obviously ladies, if you want to, to if you really must, as a black woman, be with a black man." You know, you need to do like Abigail. And I don't know. I don't think... You see, when you're so driven by hatred, sometimes you say and you do some, some things that don't even make any sense. So she then highlighted... This is Chrysaline's video now, but I didn't play it. You can see the logo in the, in the bottom of the screen. She said, if you are a black woman and you have to date a black man, get you a man like this. I don't know this lady. Abigail Daniela Phillips is a newsreader, right? This is from 2018. And I'm just going to read it because you probably can't see it because the font is quite small, right? It says, Abigail Daniela Phillips and Marcus Glenn Richardson were married May 26th of 2018 at the Anderson House, a historic home and museum in Washington, Jean Corbin, a Baptist minister and the assistant dean of Harvard College for Public Service officiated. Miss Phillip, 29 at the time, yeah, is a White House correspondent for CNN in Washington. She graduated from Harvard. She is a daughter of June C. Phillip and Carlos W. Phillip of Bowie, MD. The bride's father is a psychology program manager of the District of Columbia Public Schools in Washington, where her mother is a realtor and real estate investor and fa with Fairfax Realty. Mr. Richardson, that's the groom, 35 at the time, he's now 37, is a managing consultant at Envisium in Herndon, VA, a web and mobile app security company. He graduated from Florida State University. He is the son of Toussaint Richardson of Wichita, Kansas, and um, Colonel Russell G. Richardson of Wendell, NC. His father retired as a colonel in the Air Force and the director of logistics for the 3rd Air Force in Europe at Ramstein Air Base in Germany. He also served from 1990 to 91 as a squadron commander in the Gulf War. 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 <laughs> War. And the couple met in 2011 at a party. Okay? One month after they met, they... um. They met at a party. They were trying to talk. Probably some bitter woman that wanted um, the man came and interjected. They didn't get to speak, exchange numbers. But the same people who did the party did a party another, a month later. They happened to meet again. After one week after the party, they started dating. They were dating for five years where they moved in together. And two years after getting engaged, they ended up getting married. Okay, so they've been married two years. All right? Gotta take a breath. Chrysaline then tries to say, if you have to get a black man, get one like this. And the question has to become, 
When did black men tell black women to date broke, dusty men? Have black men on social media for years been telling black women choose better? And then she tried to say, well, I don't know. Because after the, the clip finished playing, I didn't listen to what Crystalyn actually went on to say. I skimmed through, I saw this, and then I'd already started commenting under the post, right? And she's like, well, I don't know if they come from two parent households. But you can see the surnames are the same. Now, unless this is incest where you've got fathers marrying daughters, I think it's safe to say they both came from two very successful two parent households. So when you tell black women, the reason why the black community has so many problems is not just because of the, the single mother rate, but because of the matriarchal um, thinking, this actually confirms what black men have been saying for the longest while. When you have daughters raised in two parent households, they are more grounded, they are more stable, they are more socialized to live harmoniously with a man. Now you've got to understand, these people met in 2011. She was 21, he was 26. Is that not the age? And we tell black women, I know I personally always tell black women, try to date older. She was at the perfect age, just on the edge of her, her womanhood. 21 and he was 26 already a highly successful man instead of disproving what black men have been saying on on the internet for years the example she actually brought completely confirms it now is she a career-minded woman yes is she a single mother to my knowledge no is she working and abandoning her kids at home as far as i can see no and guess what? She probably doesn't have to because she's got a lot of money. She can even pay for the au pair or the nanny to bring the child to, to wherever she's working. And she can work and actually monitor the child at the same time. Or she can pay for a highly sophisticated au pair or live in nanny. So yes, it doesn't make sense to compare yourself to celebrities. But at the end of the day, she's not in the same tax bracket for sure. She was like, this man is not intimidated like the other men that we watched 50 years ago. The men were not intimidated. They said, we have humble beginnings. We cannot build something when we only have a little bit of money. And if you want us to lead, you have to be willing to follow. Start small, start humble. It's not like now, 50 years later, where Daniela has got you know, a whole background behind her. Her father's probably got a lot of money. Her mother's successful. Notice she's a realtor, which is probably something you can do from home. You can have a home office where you do your real estate business and then just go out and see the people and come back. They both had a solid foundation. That's why at a young age, they were able to come together and form a happy family unit. Well, not a happy family, but they were able to live harmoniously and progress from you know, being a young couple to a now a married couple. So this whole, you know, trying to, to shame the entirety of black men, this proves that there are successful black men out here. Okay. Most men are not attracted to a woman's career. The only men who are attracted to a woman's career are the broke men who live off women because they're the ones who want to encourage women to keep working so that they can keep benefiting. They're not progressive. They're not liberal. They're actually just parasites, a lot of them. And the women don't mind dealing with these parasites because they get to be in control. And when the situation goes bad, they have the fact that he was a compromised man to fall back on as an excuse why the relationship went bad. But you knew what he was like when you got him because you were both adults. So, you know, I you, you can't have sympathy all the time. You know, Kristen is like, well, why do women listen to Jason Black and Kevin? Because they're tired of being lied to. They want the, the, the raw, unadulterated truth to wake them up. Because whereas you have women in other cultures who are buying their little two and three year old prams and dollies and they've got tea sets and they're having afternoon tea and doing the pigtails, you were going out to work. You were being told you need to help care for your brothers and sisters because your daddy's left you. So when I'm trying, you see, it was so weird after I watched the end of the video to see what she brought as the, the counter, I'd already said it. And it's like, maybe she's thinking, why did you say it when I already said it? But she, she doesn't know that I didn't watch past the clip. 
once she kind of stopped the clip and the clip got to the end, I went and watched the clip without the commentary because they're from two different channels. And then I just, I went in. <laughs> Do you understand? As you can see, you know, both barrels loaded. And so I got into it and then I went back and I said, let me try and listen to the rest of it because it's only about 15 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever left. And to see that this is what she presented as if the man, the man who comes from a two-parent household who is the descendant, as it were, of somebody in the armed forces and he himself went to the armed forces. I think he, the man went to the armed forces, the husband. Richardson is a managing consultant and he graduated from a university. Okay, his father was an army man, but I don't think he was in the army. Maybe I missed that or I got that misconstrued. But at the end of the day, the, the husband, Mr. Richardson or Marcus, he comes from a very successful family himself. So when we say that the, the black woman dictates the culture of the whole community, it's not us trying to bash black women. It's us trying to explain to black women, if your mind is not right, you're going to impart that wrong thinking to your own children. And that makes or breaks their success. Now, do you think that these two um, people, that Abigail and Marcus, do you think that their parents open doors for them? There's people that their parents know. Even the fact that Abigail and Marcus were at a particularly, looks like maybe a prestigious party, is how you're supposed to use your education and your career as a woman to get you in the door to meet the kind of men you say you want. It's not supposed to be for you to brag how much more successful you are and then still try to be hypergamous, even though this woman was because maybe this man does make more money than her. She is highly successful, but it was an age gap. You know, it worked out that way. Okay, single homes create poor black men. And we're not saying that black men can't work and they're incompetent. And we're not saying that all black men who are, are down are down because they didn't have a start either. You know, there are some people, male and female, they just like the streets. So we, we're not saying that you know, everything is the black woman's fault and we are blaming her. But we have to understand that we are a product of our upbringing. We are a reflection of the environment we are raised in. If you are raised in an impoverished environment, it's, there's a good chance that you go to a poor school, you go to a poor neighborhood, you have to struggle, you know, to get the resources you need. The school probably doesn't have a lot of good resources. All those things compounded are going to impact your ability to be socially and economically upwardly mobile. It's not hard to understand, but because a lot of these women, they don't want to take accountability and hold, hold women accountable without somehow dragging the man into it. They end up always trying to do these mental gymnastics as to why the problem is the, the man's fault and never the woman's fault. And I said to these women, at the end of the day, we all know, I'm preaching to the choir, the woman is the one who dictates who, who is born and who becomes a father. Okay, how did black boys growing up in single home, homes learn to be men? You identify with the same sex parent. If you have a, a mother that's telling you that your mother, your father was an ain't-ish dude, or you know there's no male in the home, a lot of these women behave as though there's some type of digital download of masculinity at 18. And you just have to, I mean, somebody told me, you males need to go and just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. I think it was a, I think it was a guy. With all due respect, I believe that he was probably raised by a single mother himself, you know, but I, I suspect it was a woman pretending to be a man. But it doesn't matter. This attitude of pull yourself up by your bootstraps is something that only black people really say. Every, yes, other cultures will say we all came from poverty and you've got to work, but they impart the mentality of a good work ethic and they have a culture that actually values and respects education and hard work. And, you know, I mean, again, let's go back to True Kitchen. Because the man doesn't have a Ruth Chris, all of a sudden he doesn't have anything. It's like in other cultures, they would be like bragging, my son owns this successful, beautiful restaurant. Did you hear that the queue is one month long? People are, are dying to get in and can't. And in the black community, well, this isn't Ruth Chris, so I can just stand on the chairs. Why? How, how are we ever going to progress in a culture with a mentality like this? OK, and so these women, they're intellectually dishonest about how men become men. 
Because again, once you say that men become men in the presence of their fathers, the question always has to be asked, why did you procreate with the men you procreated with? And they don't want to face that question. So they always try to turn it around and, well, you just need to pull yourself up by, by your boot strap. Boot, boot, blah, blah, boot strap. <laughs> they want simps, preferably rich simps. Exactly. They want a man that will give them sex when they're ready for children, will give them the children. He has a lot of money, but he doesn't have a lot of brains. That's all they really want. Okay, how do girls growing up in a single home how to learn how a man should be treated? Well, this is why they push this concept of genders being the same. They want to promote this concept that men and women are essentially the same so that it gradually becomes, well, it's not gradual now, it becomes easier to roll reverse. If you're saying, and this is why they're elevating the, the gay black man or the gay man and the trans woman, because they're saying, look, you guys keep telling us that men and women are different, but look how easily this man has transitioned into a woman. That's proof that we're technically the same. So that's why that agenda is there. From a spiritual perspective and from a natural perspective, it has a different, a different reasoning behind it. But from a secular perspective, they want to be able to pervert society and elevate women over men. And if you say men and women are ultimately the same, then that becomes a lot easier. And the thing that's hypocritical about a lot of these women is they will say, well, my upbringing this and my upbringing that, my mother didn't teach me how to be feminine. She didn't teach me how to do my hair. She didn't teach me how to cook. But then when a black man says, well, I didn't even have a father in the home who forsook teaching me these things. Well, that's your fault. You need to pull yourself up by your bootstrap. This double standard where it's one rule for women and another for men is another reason why a lot of men get frustrated trying to have conversations with women who just refuse to be intellectually honest. Okay, it says, <laughs> hey man, how you doing? Shout out to Bob Brown. Yeah, your little restaurant ain't all that. Exactly. And it's like, well, it will never, and it will never progress because I'm sure Ruth Chris didn't start out being what it is. It started out probably as a very humble establishment. And as it became more popular, it expanded. But you cannot have this, you know, pop culture where or pop idol style culture where it's like, whoom, you just come out of the gate. I mean, this man's restaurant is only five months old. But because he has multiple streams of income, he could plow a lot of money to make it what he wanted straight away. But a lot of businesses, you know, they don't have that luxury. So you guys, I'm, I really appreciate everybody who came through. When I saw this video, I wasn't even going to comment on it. But the more I'm having conversations with women about it and seeing what they're saying, it's just the intellectual dishonesty is why a lot of black women cannot progress. It's not that black men are holding them back. It's their mentality and the fact that they won't take accountability. Another thing we constantly talk about is what keeps black women in the position they're in. So I really respect everybody who came through. Complex, um, Bob Brown, Carl, good to see you. Naima, shout out to you. And a reigning woman was in here. George, I'm sure there were a, quite a few other guys that always come through. I really appreciate every single person who supports the channels, even the, the channel, even the people who chuck on a dislike. At least you took the time to listen. So thank you for your, your contribution. Um, Brown Bird, really appreciate you always showing that love and support. And um, yeah, share this video with somebody who needs to see it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.